Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's Friday. I do not want to do the show alone. I'm here. I know. Okay. okay <laughs> I'm here good. with you. I'm not okay. going anywhere. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Uh, good morning to you. It is Friday. It's June 2nd. Um, and all I can think about, the song Stand Alive by the Bee Gees is in my head. Uh. Uh, Michael Scott from The Office, Steve Carell's character, mm -hmm. during CPR training. And we're going to do that a little bit later on. And we picked some other songs because they have, um, shall they say, picked up the pace? Yes. Yes. Well, and then some songs that maybe some other people will be familiar with as right. well. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Not just the Bee Gees. No. Mia's here on a Friday. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Uh, notice the humidity this morning? Yes. Y'all yes, are coming into did. work? I sure did as well, and you likely will too. Stepping out for any of those morning plans, morning drive, things of that nature. We've got another hot and humid day on tap for South Central Texas. Now this morning, actually starting off a little bit above the average in spots. Right now, we're in the mid to upper 70s already. This uh, start of the 9 a.m. hour, 75 over at SA International, 77 at Stinson, 75 at Randolph, and 76 over at Kelly. Here's a look at those dew points. Once again, how we measure the low level moisture here in the atmosphere. Very elevated in the 70s. So it is sticky. And because of that humidity, we've once again see some of the clouds roll back in early this morning. Now, also like what we saw yesterday, I think into this afternoon, that's going to break up, scatter out just a little bit more. But of course, with more peaks of sunshine returning, temperatures will once again climb to about 90 degrees here in San Antonio. Now, most of the day is spent on the drier side, but later this evening, just after dinner time out in our far western counties, we are expecting a few isolated thunderstorms to develop and then move into portions of our area. Better chances of finding that the farther west you go, a few of which could be strong to severe, and we're not finished with the rain chances as we head into the upcoming weekend. So we'll talk all about it, get you a look at the setup as well as the future cast coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mia. Uh, we only have one accident working right now, and I, I don't think we've been able to find it on TransGuide, but it's out in the 151-1604 uh, area. There is an accident reported northbound Loop 1604 at Calabria. Only one lane is blocked. Closing arguments are expected to begin today in the murder retrial of Mark Howerton. He is charged in the death of Kaylee Mandotti, a Trinity University cheerleader, and his girlfriend back in 2017. Now, the first trial against Howerton in 2019 ended in a mistrial. As the defense wrapped up its case yesterday, they called a toxicology expert to take the stand, but the judge had a problem with that expert and limited his responses since he wasn't qualified to talk about medical topics. The witness called to testify was a professor from the University of Pennsylvania who studied Mandati's medical records and autopsy reports, but is not a medical doctor. The expert challenged Mandati's cause of death, saying the drug MDMA she had in her system could have contributed to her death. The state called the Bear County chief medical examiner as a rebuttal witness who reiterated that Mandati had died of blunt force trauma. After closing arguments, jury deliberations will begin. President Biden is praising Congress's efforts after the Senate passed a bill that would raise the nation's debt limit late last night. He says he's looking forward to signing the bill into law and is planning to address the nation around 6 p.m. our time this evening. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, not all lawmakers are in a celebratory mood. After a late night on Capitol Hill, the debt ceiling dilemma comes to an end. The yeas are 63, the nays are 36, the 60 vote threshold having been achieved, the bill is passed. The Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023, which got through the House earlier this week, also succeeds in the Senate. We've saved the country from the scourge of default even though there were some on the other side who wanted default. The measure also places a cap on non-defense spending, cuts some COVID-19 relief funds, and increases work requirements for some food stamp recipients. Of course, nobody got everything they wanted. There was give on both sides, but this agreement was a very good outcome. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell released a statement applauding the passage of the bill, but added, quote, our work is far from over. 
Opinions about the bill range from glasses half full. Is it a home run? No. It's maybe a single, uh, maybe a double, but I don't think anyone expected that uh, Kevin McCarthy could deliver uh, any base runners at all, and he has. Too pretty pessimistic. This is a bill that weakens us in the fight against climate change. It takes food away from hungry people. It makes students who are struggling on student loan debt locked in harder on making their payments. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In your morning headlines, a cheerleader who was shot outside Austin in April is talking about her life-changing experience and changes at Churchill Downs. Plus, a lot of controversy surrounding the new version of The Little Mermaid and a chance for us to get a somewhat live look at Mars. David Sears is here with all the stories. I'm going to be looking for those, those people. Which people? The Martians. Yeah. <laughs> Those people. From Mars. <laughs> hey, if we could get a shot at Mars, you know, might as well find out if there's really any little people there. Little, little, green, little, little green, green people? <laughs> no. Hey, for the first time since being shot three times in an H-E-B parking lot back in April, 18-year-old Peyton Washington is talking while she continues to recover. Peyton and some fellow cheerleaders were at their carpool spot in the parking lot in Elgin, just outside of Austin. One of Peyton's teammates, Heather Roth, had just gotten out of her car and went to open the door of her car. At least she thought it was hers. She saw someone sitting in the passenger seat, so she went back to the car where her friends were. The stranger in that other car got out, pulled a gun, started shooting. The girls drove off, but the damage was done. Peyton hit three times, spent weeks in the ICU. Where were you shot? My right butt, twice, and then my back, and it shot through. I only felt pain in my left ab. I was like, why is my ab sore? Like, we didn't even work out that hard, like, mm. why is it hurting? But that's where it went. I don't even know, it's kind of unreal, but I'm just trying to do whatever I can to be normal and do everything a senior in high school would do. So her injuries included a shattered spleen, two holes in her stomach, two in her diaphragm, had to remove part of a lobe from her pancreas, not to mention 32 staples. Through it all, Five weeks after the shooting, she was able to walk the stage. She graduated with a 5.1 GPA and is headed to Baylor. The suspect shooter is out of jail on a $100,000 bond. After having to euthanize 12 horses since March 30th, Churchill Downs has decided to change some of their policies when it comes to racing and training horses. Remember, an investigation has already started and continues, but the home of the Kentucky Derby is trying to get out in front of it by implementing some changes. There will still be races at Churchill Downs. However, some of the race incentives will be put on hold. Trainers were getting bonuses for the number of race starts. That has been put on pause. Also, payouts for every horse that finished a race has been on put on hold. Other initiatives, the number of races a horse can participate in now four over a rolling eight week period. All those changes start immediately. The folks investigating had a meeting this past Tuesday. Churchill Down members and the Racing Commission have started to review some of the information related to those deaths. The latest version of the Little Mermaid causing a reworking of the rating system by the entertainment database IMDB because of review bombing. Review bombing is a ton of negative reviews posted online. So far, the movie has made about 200 million worldwide. And depending on who you read or ask, it is either a good live animation or not so good. Some movie critics say it needs to make about 750 million just to break even. That of course includes the ad budget. Despite all that, IMBD says it has seen unusual voting activity for the film, getting seven out of 10 stars. And we are just one step closer to getting a really good look at Mars and finding out if there are really little green men running around on the red planet. You will get a chance to see for yourself live I sort of. The European Space Agency is set to live stream an hour of the first live images, images from Mars. They launched the Mars Express 20 years ago. The mission takes to take a 3D image of surface of Mars. So here's a little twist. It's not really a true, true live stream like we've known to do and love. It takes about 17 minutes for light needed to form the images to travel from Mars to Earth, then another minute to get the servers on the ground to do their thing to make sure the images look like they're supposed to. The plan is to stream new images every 50 seconds. The ESA is going to stream on their YouTube channel. It'll start this morning about 11 our time. So, so about in. 20 minutes for the signal yes. to, to get here yeah. uh, and, and be processed. And then you got to go stuff. through the server and process yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, so. Sort of a live stream. Sort yeah. of live. So, At least that possibility is out there. I'm just, hey, I just want to see some 
I want to wave at someone. <laughs> and have them wave back. That's, that's next. It's still better than a dial-up modem, David. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> you can't even make the noise. We can't even imitate that noise. <laughs> Close enough. Thank you, David. 907, 76 degrees. Still ahead on DMSA at 9. Knowing how to do CPR can save someone's life, and that's a very important message there during National CPR Week in our next half hour. Mark and I will be doing a demonstration with a member from the American Heart Association to learn how to do hands-only CPR the correct way. And we both pick songs to yeah. perform it. We'll see. By. We're not going to perform this. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a new spelling bee champ. When we come back, the word that got him $50,000 in prizes. Now his parents said he prepared for this big moment. The word is Samophile, and our producer was nice enough to put a little phonetic in there and everything. It's not a word we hear very often, but it's the one word that made 14-year-old Deb Shaw right here, the 2023 Scripps National Spelling Bee champion. And in case you don't know the meaning of Samophile, it is an organism that prefers or thrives in sandy environments. And as ABC's Rihanna and Ali reports, the teen from the Tampa Bay area took home a $50,000 cash prize after going back and forth with another 14-year-old in the final round. It's, it's the over. biggest night in sports. Denver makes history. No, we're not talking about the NBA Finals. We're talking about the Scripps National Spelling Bee. T H I S, it's just Orcus. Correct. T H O N L E O T C O N. Correct. I A N I D E L I O N. Correct. Thank you. With the pronouncer ready and raring to go. Oh yeah, we're ready. Whoop, whoop. Spelling sluggers ranging in age from 11 to 14 in this war of the words. The elite etymologist starting off with some softballs. O-U-S Columbus. Correct. Oh my God. But the competition quickly heating up. E-A-N like you E-A-N. Sarah Fernandez, the youngest finalist, losing out on this work, meaning a disreputable lawyer. But don't feel too bad for the 11-year-old. If being a spelling champ isn't in her future, being a musician might. She's already played piano at Carnegie Hall. We can't wait to see what you accomplish, Sarah. And before long, one. R-O-N-E, Fairtron. By one. That dreaded bell rang for eight more contestants until just two remained. 14-year-olds Charlotte Walsh of Arlington, Virginia, and Deb Shaw of Largo, Florida, facing off for the title of best speller. M-M-I-N-E, Akuemi. That is correct. M-E-T-E-R, Bathypetometer. Correct. It was back and forth until Charlotte fumbled on this word. Davilet, D-A-E-V-I-L-I-C-K, Davilet. giving Dev a chance to take the crown. Samophile. That is correct. His beaming parents joining him on stage as he hoisted that big trophy. For the last one year, he has been spending at least 10 hours here and there doing it. So I'm so proud of him. Rihanna and Ali, ABC News, New York. Wow. I know. Congratulations to Deb. I mean, we only saw short clips, and I already felt pressure just oh, watching. Yeah. The tension you could probably yes. cut with a knife. So, again, the word is Samophile. It's P-S-A-M-M-O-P-H-I-L-E. I would probably say, can you use P Samophile in a sentence, please? <laughs> Something I would do too. I hadn't even heard of a lot of those words no, before, too, much no. less how to spell them. Yeah, so great job to all the contestants. Wow, going yeah. amazing places. Mm -hmm. Yep, very impressive. All right, so weather wise today, kind of a lot like yesterday, except we don't really have as many showers on the radar right now as what we were dealing with this time yesterday morning. And I think for the most part today, we're going to be pretty quiet out there. Highs are still going to head for about 90 degrees here in San Antonio, especially after we see some more peaks of sunshine later on this afternoon. But then as we head into the evening hours, especially across our far western counties, we are expecting a few isolated strong to potentially even severe thunderstorms to develop and then that could track eastward weakening as it does so across portions of the hill country later on tonight. So we'll talk about that in just a second. This weekend overall it's going to be hot and humid. A few more storm chances especially into Saturday night and early Sunday morning and then next week a little bit cooler highs in the 80s but daily storm chances will continue. So we're kind of going back to a little bit more of an active weather pattern here in our neck of the woods. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Yes the humidity is in place 
place. So the cloud cover is here with us as well. We can see that on satellite temperatures warm 75 right now here in San Antonio 77 in Kennedy 77 in Carrizo Springs as well. Rock Springs once again holding on to the upper 60s for as long as they can here this morning into this afternoon. Again, we will see the morning cloud cover break up and scatter out just a little bit more leading way to some more sun 84 by lunchtime 88 by 2 p.m. And again, we've got that forecast high pointed around 90 degrees here in San Antonio. Friday evening plans for the most part here in town should sit on the drier side. We'll see those temperatures fall into the mid 80s by 8 p.m. before we start to monitor for those storm chances out west. Again, 91 in New Braunfels, 89 in Hondo, 90 in Cashville, 92 out in Pleasanton. With the humidity, it will likely feel just a little bit warmer as well. All right, let's talk about future cast, depicting what the radar could look like here here over the next day or two as we see these storm chances return to the forecast. So for most of us this afternoon, we're pretty quiet, maybe an isolated stray shower across our southeastern counties, the coastal plains region. Notice just after dinner time, though, this is 8 p.m. Some storms are expected to develop off the dry line in far west Texas. And then as we advance this on later on tonight, 9, 10 o'clock, we could see some of that activity move into our our far western counties. So near Valverde County, Edwards County, up into the hill country. Again, the general trend into the early morning hours of our Saturday should be that these storms should weaken here a little bit and then eventually fall apart. But we will continue to keep eyes on it, especially for those up in our northwestern counties. And then we quiet things down through the remainder of the overnight by wake up time tomorrow morning. Just an isolated stray shower possible. And then we're going to keep about a 20 to 30 percent potential potential for a few more isolated pop up fall down showers and storms throughout the day. It's not going to be for everybody. Don't cancel your plans throughout the day because of that. Just keep an eye on the radar there as well. But then watch what happens again tomorrow evening around 7 p.m. Another cluster of storms off to our northwest looks to move in and that could potentially be slightly higher coverage than what we're expecting with tonight's round of activity moving farther east into the pre dawn hours of our Sunday. We will need to monitor for a couple of isolated strong to potentially even severe storms, both with the storm chance tonight and then into tomorrow night. But again, the general trend should be that these are weakening as they move eastward. So overall, keep your eyes on the radar this weekend and you can see that yes, we do have isolated storm chances that continue daily even into next week, guys. But at least it won't be a complete rain out. Not a washout by any means, but we'll definitely keep eyes on it because it could get a little noisy in spots, especially during the nighttime hours. Thanks for the heads up. Thank you. Time right now is 918 76 degrees. Toxic chemicals on shelves next to candy and other food. Just one of the many health violations inspectors found and Tim Berger tells us what else they found behind the bathroom door. The election day for the city's runoff race is about a week away, and if you're looking to vote this weekend, you can do so today and tomorrow. Polls are open right now and close at 6 p.m. today. Tomorrow, polling locations open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Don't try Sunday, though. The polls are closed then. Early voting wraps up on Monday and on Tuesday, it's election day. So uh, excuse me, election day is next Saturday, June 10th, and that's when we find out who will represent districts one and seven right here in San Antonio. In other news this morning, a Westside convenience store racked up numerous health code violations, including 10 that were repeats from a previous inspection. Tim Gerber stopped by the business to find out if they have fixed the problems behind their kitchen door. Little Sam's, located in the 6800 block of Highway 90 West, saw its previous score of 85 drop to a 76. They were selling bags of ice without the proper labels, and there was a black mold-like substance in the chute of the ice machine. Raid, nail polish remover, and bleach were all found on shelves right next to granola bars and candy. Containers of food were stored on the floor. Serving tongs were stored in dirty, cloudy red water, and the employee bathroom was also being used as a storage facility. Hello. 
I'm with KSAT 12. Can I ask you some questions about your recent inspection? I dropped in this week to see if corrections were being made. You guys had 10 repeat violations. Have you guys made the corrections on that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. While he says all the violations were corrected, I noticed they did not have the current health inspection report posted as required by Metro Health. Well, you are supposed to have that posted. <laughs> Dr. Ria Guadalajara in the 1600 block of Southwest Military Drive earned a 74 and a reinspection. They had to throw out food that wasn't properly cooled. Raw foods were stored above ready to eat foods. An employee didn't wash hands when changing gloves. Another wasn't changing gloves when changing tasks. And a cook was touching food with bare hands. <laughs> Vietnam restaurant in the 3200 block of Broadway got an 80 that included five repeat violations. Rice and chicken were left out at room temp to cool. There was no hand soap available and no hot water at the hand sink. Tools were found next to pots and pans and they were told a back storage room was not approved for food prep. <laughs> this Bahama Buck shaved ice in the 5800 block of Loop 410 was in need of a good cleaning according to the inspector. They got an 86. Unsanitized wet blenders were stacked on top of each other near the prep area. Hot water wasn't hot enough at two sinks. Bags of sugar were on the floor and the ice cream wasn't covered. A detailed cleaning was needed to remove syrup splash on walls and equipment. A reinspection was ordered to make sure the hot water was fixed and that the business was clean. For BKD, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. The U.S. economy added 339,000 jobs in May, far outpacing expectations, we learned this morning. The unemployment rate rose 3.7 percent from 3.4 percent, while the jobs report is typically a key piece of information in the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates or not. Officials may not rely too much on today's report in order to make their decision in a couple of weeks because they already are leaning towards a pause on rate hikes. Mortgage rates are the highest they have been since November, and a new report shows the 30-year fixed rate average is 6.79 percent. There's a slight increase from the previous week and 1.5 percent higher than the same time last year. Some Apple customers apparently running into problems moving money out of the new Apple savings accounts. Some transfers have taken days or even weeks. Apple and Goldman Sachs, which manages the accounts, have yet to respond to these issues. Getting a burger or a steak is going to cost even more. Ranchers say price increases for just about everything have cut cattle herds to their lowest levels in nearly a decade. That's sending prices for products like ground beef up 20 percent compared to three years ago. 926, 76 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a look at highlights of Game 1 of the NBA Finals. David Sears will be back to talk about the game and a look ahead to Game 2. And we will be doing a live demonstration with a member from the American Heart Association who will show us how to properly do hands-only CPR and why it is so important to know how to do it. Let's look out there with a live cam this morning, almost at 930 and the sun's already shining through the clouds, Mia. Yep, we are starting to see this morning cloud cover break up just a little bit more as we've been expecting and we are going to see more sunshine, especially this afternoon, leading to another seasonably hot early June day. Let's take a look at the pollen count first, though. We've got great news as we get ready to wrap up the work week. Just molds out there in today's count and they continue to fall from where they were earlier this week sitting at 480 this Friday in the low category. So not many issues out there. Temperature sitting in the mid 70s right now here in town, a dew point of 70. So that humidity is noticeable. And as we head into this afternoon and see more sun, those temperatures are expected to climb to about 90 degrees here in town. So yes, it is going to be pretty hot out there. And when you factor in that moisture in place, could feel just a few degrees warmer. Not a whole lot going on right now across the radar. And that's going to be the theme for the majority of the day today, especially here in San Antonio. But later on tonight, just after dinner time, a couple of isolated strong storms will try to move into our far northwestern counties and we'll see how well they can hold together as they track east into the pre dawn hours of our Saturday. It is possible we need to briefly monitor for some of those storms to become strong to severe. And we're not finished with the storm chances after that into the weekend. So another full look at that, plus a check at tropical activity coming up in just a few guys.
Thanks, Mia. Cardiac arrest, the leading cause of death, and when a person suffers from one, their survival depends on CPR, receiving someone, uh, someone giving them CPR uh, immediately nearby. That's right. June 1st through the 7th is National CPR Week. So joining us this morning is Jordan Campos from the American Heart Association to give us a demonstration of hands-only CPR. Good morning. Good morning. Jordan, good to have you here. So for a long time, we were told uh, mouth-to-mouth and then CPR, but mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth is kind of taking a back seat now to CPR, has it not? Yeah, so we're noticing lo very low bystander CPR rates, especially here in San Antonio. We have about a 36% bystander rate here in San Antonio compared to a 45% national average. So we were looking at what are the barriers and how can we eliminate them? And one of them was the mouth-to-mouth -mouth component. So we're focusing just on the chest compressions, acting as an external heart on the person who's experienced cardiac arrest. That makes sense. And we've all seen it in TV shows and movies, and it looks like a piece of cake, right? Yeah. It takes a lot more effort than I thought. And a lot, a lot more, more pressure, and, yeah. and it's okay to break ribs, I understand. Yeah, it, it occurs pretty frequently, and, and you know, when you're in that horrible situation, you're panicking, you barely know your own name at this point. So like you were saying, it's, it's a little bit more intense than you think based on watching things on TV. So we try and keep it as simple as possible. Two simple steps to remember with hands-only CPR. One, call 911. Two, push hard and fast on the center of the chest. All right, let's give it a shot. So yeah, there's step one, step two. And uh, Steph, uh, you want to go ahead and give it a shot? Oh, okay, I thought you were going to do it first. Well, I can. Well, yeah, 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 you not first, a problem. Yeah. You first, and then we'll give it a try. So go. you're just going to be on the side of the victim, <laughs> okay. and you're going to make sure you place the heel of your palm on your non-dominant hand on right. the center of the chest. Okay. And you're going to take your dominant hand and place it on top. Right. And then you're going to make sure your arms stay straight, and you're just applying pressure. On this dummy, you can hear the click. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're doing here. And it's a pretty good amount of force, as you guys were saying. So that's why it's good to practice on these guys so you're prepared in case you're in the actual situation. We, try, yeah. we tried it during the commercial break, and it took a lot it more did. than we thought. Like our, yeah, yeah. you put your whole body weight straight, into it, right? Hard straight. Perfect. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hopefully he'll live with I saw, all, uh, all of us I here. saw a video the other day from uh, a beach in Australia, and a guy went into cardiac arrest, and there were lifeguards everywhere. And he was a big guy, and the force that they were having to use. Oh, yeah, it and, definitely. And, it, and, and I tell you what, and they were doing it, and it was rapid, and it went on. This seems like forever. Mm -hmm. It went on for minutes and minutes because it took seven or eight minutes for the ambulance to get there. Yeah, and every minute that CPR is not administered, there's a 10% decrease in survival chances. So after 10 minutes, there's basically a 0% chance of survival. That's why it's important we all know how to do it, so we can step in immediately. You're not waiting that seven or eight minutes for the ambulance to arrive. I'm glad you came in today because I was thinking about this recently. If I had to do this, I, I, I was thinking to myself, I don't remember the hand position. It's I, been a long, long time. And again, yeah. the main emphasis for us, like when we were going through high school was again, was mouth, uh, to, mouth, mouth. to mouth. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And for a lot of people too, they're thinking, I'm not going to step in because I don't remember exactly how or what if I do something wrong. And, you know, the, the big point here is their heart has stopped. It's already as bad as it's going to get. You can't do anything wrong. So even if you feel like I haven't done this in a while, just step in. All right. So if you Google uh, CPR, one of the things that pops up invariably is that episode of The Office of where they're yes. doing the corporate CPR training. <laughs> yep. And Michael Scott is learning how to do it to the Bee Gees song, uh, Stay Alive. Alive, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, apparently we need to pick up the pace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got a whole playlist actually. It's called Keep the Beat. It's a Spotify playlist that has songs that are 100 to 120 beats per minute that help you practice. And we picked out some this morning. So Steph, you, you picked a couple of these out too, right? Yes, I picked out uh, Drake uh, and the Spice Girls and also uh, John, I think we both picked Johnny Cash. Yeah, Ring of Fire, that's a good one. But Stan Alive, what, is that still on the list for us, Jordan? It is, okay. yeah, that's the one that, because of The Office, most people like that one. <laughs> right, yes. absolutely. And then I added, and Eye of the Tiger was on there, so I picked that one from Survivor, so. Uh, but staying alive, definitely front of mind. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Was that a good bit of PR for the office to go oh, viral yeah. like and that? Oh, yeah, I use it in all, my, all the demonstrations I do. Let's get some laughs in first, and then we'll actually learn some hands only CPR. Because <laughs> I don't think they ever really learned it on the office. <laughs> no, it no. became a whole different <laughs> yeah, <no>. deal. <laughs> Wow. But I'm glad, I mean, something as simple, I, I was doing this wrong because I was, I didn't have my Right, my elbows hands, bent, right, my, yeah, exactly, elbows, yeah, just, just that simple correction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, came, that comes in handy. I was, I was telling Jordan earlier that there was a, a San Antonio couple that I had interviewed, uh, it was, uh, maybe it was 2018 or 2019, and they were just walking along the river walk, and mm -hmm. the husband was experiencing a heart attack. Luckily, the wife 
knew the signs and knew what to do. And I'm, I'm not sure what she did for a living. And she kept in line, but she had to do those chest compressions yeah. until help got there. And so she did break a few ribs. Yeah. I have a, a somewhat dumb question, Jordan, as we wrap things up. Uh, do you keep doing chest compressions until somebody until says stop? Until the ambulance arrives, okay. EMS is there. Um, ideally, you're not alone and you can take turns because right. you're going to get tired, you'll get weaker, it won't Absolutely. be as effective. But yes, don't stop until there is somebody with an ambulance in front of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So glad you came in today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yes. it was a good refresher. Yes. yes. Thank you for being here, and of thank course. you for all, you know giving everyone a reminder oh, about how course. important this is. Somebody watching right now is going to wind up saving a bit of life yeah, one day. Absolutely, that's the goal. All right. Thanks, yeah, Jordan. Thank Eric, you. thank you too for coming yes, in today. Thank Appreciate you. it. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Uh, it's 937, 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine. And still to come on GMSA at nine, a look at Game One of the NBA Finals as Denver takes the lead. David Sears is going to be back with all of the highlights. As we head to break, here's a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around the city. Today, over at Thousand Oaks Library, kids can practice reading aloud to a therapy dog. How adorable is that? Aww. This activity is recommended for children's ages 6 to 12, and that's happening from 3 to 4 p.m. And over at Memorial Library, kids can join the Lego Club for fun from 4 to 5 p.m. This activity also for kids ages 5 to 12 or look at all the events scheduled for today at different public libraries around the Alamo City. Just head to the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. Be right back. June is here, and while not traditionally considered a big month for sales, there are plenty of deals to be found. Deal News rounded up what's likely to be on sale and when. The big event will be Father's Day sales in the middle of the month. Deal News says look for significant savings at retailers as varied as Macy's, Home Depot, and Amazon. Last year, Macy's offered as much as 70% off on some items with additional savings with a coupon code. June has also become a good month to find discounts on PC games. Steam has confirmed the dates for its summer sale. It will start at the end of the month on June 29th and run all the way through July 13th and watch for other retailers to drop prices on PC games as well. Another category to be discounted this month, spring apparel. Nike, Vineyard Vines, Adidas, and Michael Kors all ran promotions with big savings last year. And with wedding season underway, watch for bargains on dinnerware and cookware. Check Amazon as well as department stores for savings. For more on where to find the savings in June, check out the full story at dealnews.com. Oh, she said Adidas the German way. Adidas. I noticed that. Yeah, I was like, that's it? interesting. You in there. I'm also going to kill somebody with CPR. I thought I was doing the lyrics to... Um, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Uh, Stephanie corrected me during the break. I yeah. was doing Gloria, Gloria Gaynor's Gainer. I Will Survive. <laughs> well, I mean, so, the, the theme is good. You want to you. survive. The intentions yeah. that, is, yeah. that is true. The dedication to you were locked you. in and you yes. were ready to rock I was. and roll. At, at least we know the correct moves now. Right. So, at yeah. first I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, we'll get it, it. It'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be yeah. fine. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> David. Here to save you, David. He said stay away from me, Mark. <laughs> okay, so weather. Sorry, no, me. that's okay. Um, so, yes, today is going to be hot and it's going to be humid, but we have some storm chances to talk about later on tonight and into the upcoming weekend. We've got high pressure still in control for the most part right now, but you can see just off to our west a couple of low pressure systems that are going to slingshot some disturbances our direction. But I actually want to talk a little bit about the low pressure system that is off to our east, still churning over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Yesterday, the National Hurricane Center deemed this Tropical Depression 2. Also yesterday was the first day of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season, so a bit timely as well. This is the latest to update in from the NHC. Winds are still at just 35 miles per hour, slowly moving off to the south. And over the next 24 hours, it is expected to weaken as it moves into an unfavorable environment to maintain itself. So just into a remnant low as it approaches Cuba into tomorrow evening. This is not going to impact us here in Texas and really into Florida. Just some periods and pockets of heavy rain possible throughout the remainder of the day. But that's pretty much it. Back here at home, this is our setup this Friday morning. We still have winds out of the south east pumping in more of that Gulf moisture, which is why it is humid out there. But
but also off to our west, we've got a dry line that is setting up near the Permian Basin. As we head into this afternoon, you can see by 2 o'clock, while we are still pretty quiet here across south central Texas, across far western Texas and up into the panhandle, some storm development is expected to get up and running. And after dinner time, especially across our far western counties near Del Rio, Comstock, Rock Springs, even stretching over to Lakey and maybe even Kerrville, we could see a couple of those isolated strong, maybe even severe thunderstorms work their way in to the southern Edwards Plateau and northern hill country. And then they should generally be on a weakening trend as they track eastward and approach I-35, potentially fizzling out altogether by the time we head into the early morning hours of our Saturday. But initially, way far out west, a couple of isolated strong storms will be possible with that. So we'll continue to keep you updated throughout the remainder of the day into tomorrow. A few isolated showers possible first thing in the morning, just a 20 to 30% potential for a little bit more isolated pop up fall down development into the afternoon. That will generally be the theme. Honestly, I think throughout the majority of the day tomorrow, most of us will stay dry and miss out. But as we head into the evening hours, we see another complex of thunderstorms come together that could move in farther out west and then track east eastward throughout our region into Saturday night and into the pre dawn hours of our Sunday. Once again, weakening as it does so, but we will need to monitor initially maybe a few isolated strong to severe storms with that farther west. Once again, temperature wise, we're going to start off near about 70 degrees as we head into the morning hours tomorrow and into Sunday. Temperatures climbing to 90 yet again tomorrow afternoon, upper 80s into Sunday and then we still have isolated daily chances to find a few more storms into next week. Because of that, temperatures a little bit cooler in the mid to upper 80s. So a lot to keep eyes on over the next seven days. We'll continue to keep you updated, guys. Thank you, Mia. And the Denver Nuggets got a huge night out of their star player. No joke. No joke. Yeah, I get it. The Heat looked a little worn out. The Nuggets came to get game one of the NBA Finals last night. David Sears is back. Nikolai Jokic is called the Joker. The Joker. Mm -hmm. That's why it was no joke last mm -hmm. night for the Nuggets. And we warn Nugget fans, enjoy the win from last night, but don't get too excited. Spurs have been down this road so many times. You blow out a team. Next thing you know, that team comes back. So there's still a long way to go. Of course, the Heat couldn't hit the ocean last night with the Broadway. Well, probably because they were like in Denver. <laughs> that, <in the> <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too. And, you know, they were talking about the altitude last night. Could that have an effect on them? Maybe in game one, but now they're going to be in Denver for a few, uh, few days, so they could probably get, uh, get used to the altitude. And they just finished that seven-game series with Boston, so that might have taken a little bit out of them. So you expect the Heat to be a little different come Sunday. But let's go to last night. Nikolai Jokic, like we said, no joke. First NBA playoffs finals game. Jamal Murray gets it for look at that pass this guy he had like five assists before he had a point something like that last night and then the final seconds of the first quarter yeah gets a rebound Aaron Gordon gets it back you'll get for the uh, little little bucket there so this is the way it ends up 104 93 the Nuggets get the win they got it by 24 at one point the Heat came back which they usually do it's a typical NBA game they cut it to nine he had 27 points 14 assists, 10 rebounds. He is only the second player to ever play his first NBA game and score a triple-double in the NBA history. So that's pretty good. Jamal Murray at 26. Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. had double digits as well. 104-93 Nuggets get game one of the NBA Finals over the Heat. I don't care if I scored 50 or zero, you know, as long as I'm helping impact the game and we're winning. We will adjust, do some things very differently, and uh, come out here and be ready to get one for game two. All right, so one adjustment they're going to make last night, the Heat shot two, count them, two free throws. That is an NBA record for That's... the lowest number of free throws. So Jimmy Butler was talking about also how they got to get more aggressive. They got to start driving. They set up a bunch of jump shots and just clanging off the rim. There's a new house there in, in a nice brick home there in, in Denver for somebody. Because these guys were <laughs> shooting some bricks last night. They couldn't hit them. <laughs> Damn. That's pretty good. So um, like they got to get aggressive, and that's what Jimmy Butler was talking about. You see the, uh, the signs all around the arena there last night. It was yeah. altitude warning. So that's, that's kind of a mind game that the Denver fans are trying to play. So it's one nothing. The Nuggets 
going into game two on Sunday night, 7 o'clock. All right, so, so they'll the acclimate. Be they'll have a few days to yeah. get some O2 going and yeah. get some practice. They'll be all right. Yeah. Nobody really talked about that. I mean, it, it is a factor. It, it always has been a factor. Yes. Nobody really talked about that. But I think the game seven, when they were up 3 nothing on the Celtics, that might have taken a little bit out of them. And then the fact that, uh, you know, it's good. Somebody, they ought to give away that house. It's probably, probably a really nice house. House. So. Made of bricks. Yes. Yep. Made of bricks. And I know it's been a while since we've been in the finals, but again, don't forget the formats. Two, two, one, one, one. one, one. So one. two there, days, two yep. in Miami, and then alternating right. through a game seven. Yeah, it used to be that two, three, two, and they changed that. Yeah. So yeah. I don't want to confuse anybody. This one's better. Bring yeah. that up. Yes. I like this one much better. Yes. Yeah. Too, Although right. when we were playing in Miami, we got to stay in Miami for like seven days. So that was kind of fun. That was <laughs> the upside of that trip, right? Right. Of that, yeah, yeah of yeah. that trip. David, thank okay. you, sir. Of that trip. <laughs> yep. 950, 77 degrees. We'll be right back. The sequel to the Oscar-winning animated Spider-Man movie swings into theaters today. CNN's is Rick Jamajoli gives us a look at Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. My name is Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. Shamik Moore is back as the voice of Miles Morales in Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Miles! Want to get out of here? Oh! When? So wait a minute. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it? Wait, what? Who's the new guy? The animated adventure is the sequel to 2018's Academy Award winning Into the Spider-Verse. This is one of those movies that you know while you're watching it that you need to watch it many more times. And that was true for a couple of reasons while I was in this theater, which was packed with people in spider people costumes, whether they were Gwen Stacy or Miles Morales or versions of Peter Parker, it was wonderful. But the movie is jam packed with information and lore and visual effects and flourishes. What's a guy got to do to join this spider team? What's happening in the sequel is an expansion and into the literal spider verse. And we get a lot more vignettes and appearances of different spider people from across this multiverse that is being crafted. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Just like the first film, which was an Oscar winning picture and deservedly so, this is a movie that I think is going to transform the animation industry and transform creativity across the spectrum because it's so rife and so filled with imagination and inspiration and love, man. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Hollywood. I'm Rick Damagella. All right, we are in the upper 70s now, right now into this afternoon. Daytime highs headed for about 90 degrees. So it is going to be seasonably hot and muggy with some more sunshine returning. Later on tonight out west, a couple of isolated strong to severe thunderstorms will be possible. So we'll need to keep eyes on that. And then afterwards, just more daily chances to find a few storms out there. So a lot to monitor, guys. Thank you, Mia. If you're looking for something to do tomorrow, tomorrow's free fishing day in Texas every year on the first Saturday in June. Anyone's allowed to fish recreationally without a license in Texas. However, the daily bag and size limits apply. And remember, do not fish on private property. Free to fish day to fish is meant to encourage everyone to try it. You can find more information about free fishing day right now on KSAT.com. And if you want to take a break from the city and head out of town, we have a list of festivals that are worth checking out in the Hill Country. This weekend is the Old Town Street Festival in Leander, but there are several other events happening in the next few weekends. Just head over to kset.com to find that full list on our website. There you go, for the web story. That's right. Don't forget, if we get storms tonight, to get the Weather Authority app, you can track your radar right there on your phone. Absolutely. Keep it handy this weekend. Even when the power goes out. That's true. Thank you, Mia, for keeping us posted, and y'all have a good weekend.